Alight with bioluminescence as they float through the night sky, the firefly is a mystical, enchanting creature for many cultures. But not so for the West African Awe peoples of Ghana, Benin, Nigeria, and Togo. For them, fireflies can cause great anxiety. In Awe mythology, fireflies may be the form taken by an evil entity called the Adze. While there are very few folk stories about the Adze as a physical monster, mostly just passing references and descriptions, Adze as a belief is more complex. So why has the idea of a flying, nocturnal, blood-sucking firefly endured? I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and this is Monstrum. A nebulous, monstrous spirit, Adze can take on many guises, the firefly among them. The Awe peoples believe that this nocturnal force is almost always ill-intentioned, and if called upon through malevolent sorcery, may enter the body and empower the sorcerer with special abilities. While under the influence of malignant Adze, these individuals are called the Adzetos or Adzetohos. While possessed, the Adzetos are compelled into nocturnal shape-shifting. A floating ball of light or a flame emerges from the possessed person's nose or mouth, or may appear through the top of their head. Often the flame takes the form of an owl, firefly, or a kind of beetle. This allows the possessed to travel great distances by flight, which comes in handy because the spirit also compels the Adzetos to feed on the life force of other humans, usually their blood or flesh. The word Adze, however, itself has a bit of a complex etymology, especially amongst West African people like the Fon, the Mina, the Yoruba, the Ashanti, and the Eve, and so many others who live in um, Togo, Benin, Ghana, and Nigeria. That's Helen Nde, researcher and curator of Mythological Africans, an online community that explores mythology and folklore from the African continent. In one context, um, Azi is understood as a creative genius and spiritual power, especially as embodied and wielded by women. And this is a good thing. Um, Ajay is also understood as a bad sorcery, so creative genius and spiritual power wielded for harm, so to hurt other people out of jealousy or envy or just shut and from the desire to see them suffer. Helen taught me that all Adze aren't bad or malevolent. It's more about the intention of the person who wields this force. The capital A Adze monster we are talking about is just one manifestation, a very frightening one. The monster Adze's ability to appear as an insect makes it particularly threatening. They could be anywhere and everywhere. Their small size allows them to enter seemingly closed spaces through keyholes, cracks, and under door frames. An insect-borne illness is already a threat. In some variations of Adze lore, the monsters have an appendage like an elephant trunk or anteater-like nose used to slurp up the blood of their victims. If blood isn't handy, the creature will drink palm oil, coconut water, or coconut milk, so these fluids can be offered to appease an Adze monster and protect one's community. Flying nocturnal blood-sucking insects. You would think the mosquito would be the most common form, so why fireflies? If you start with the understanding of Aze as a flame-like entity which comes out of people's noses and mouths or out the top of their heads and flies around at night looking for other people to suck blood from and cause death or disease to, then it makes sense that the firefly would be one of the creatures associated with this entity. It flies around at night, it glows in the dark. A flying insect that appears to glow like a small flame. Makes sense. It's also possible that the belief in the monstrous Adze developed as a response not only to illness more broadly, but to disease-carrying insects like mosquitoes, which could explain the proboscis-like appendage of the creature. But let's not forget, Adze mostly refers to malevolent sorcery, not a monster. The main misconception about Adze that I would like to dispel is this understanding of it as simply a blood-sucking vampiric entity. Adze cannot be understood outside of its context as a manifestation of bad sorcery. So you have the entity, but the entity comes out of the efforts of a, a, a bad actor using occult powers. Um, blood sucking is also just one of the ways in which Adze will wreak havoc on a person's life. They also cause illness and death, they cause mental distress, and they can cause loss of job, loss of property, or just loss of good standing in society. Awe practitioners of this bad sorcery, in general, may be associated with cannibalism and consumption because they prey on the resources of the community to the detriment of all. Often associated with contentious familial and community relationships, in Awe culture, Adze attacks pose a constant threat, most predominantly to wealth and fertility, and another valuable resource, blood. 
The Adze monster's preferred victims are children. In fact, in some Ewe traditions, they only hunt the most beautiful children. My theory around this is that physical attractiveness is a, an enviable quality. And one of the motivating forces behind using Adze is jealousy and envy and wanting other people to suffer. So um, people who have qualities that another person envy uh, become targets for Adze. And it's not just beauty, there is intelligence and charisma and wealth and anything that a person might possess that other people might 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 want or feel jealous towards them and want them to suffer for. The odds are active at night and some people say they see them in their dreams. If you manage to catch one of these creatures, it will transform into a human and attack you. So it's possible that they can be killed in this mortal form. It is believed, however, that if you were to catch an Adze and it transformed into a human being, it will plead for its life and offer you all kinds of things to make sure that you don't kill it. And if you spare its life, then it, it becomes your friend and it doesn't bother you anymore. There are groups within Awe culture that work against the use of malevolent sorcery, neutralizing or punishing the accused, sometimes with death. Someone can be accused of being a blood-sucking possessed firefly or a traveling flame and also look like a human during the day. And therefore, there's a possibility that real innocent lives can be taken in the name of Adze destruction. Long a part of oral traditions, one of the Adze's first appearances in written literature is in an ethnographic book written in 1906 by German missionary Jacob Spieth. While his description isn't incorrect, he is very quick to label the Adze as witchcraft, a complicated term in Africa. Over time, you know, with colonization and the introduction of Christianity and, and other spiritual belief systems, the fear of Adze has only become more complex. Now, it is impossible to situate this outside of the context of colonialism because um, what happened with the wave of colonial enterprise that swept across much of the African continent is that traditional ways of organizing community belief systems and political systems were destabilized. And this had a profound effect on the physical, emotional, and psychological well-being of communities. And there is research which shows that where this destabilization brought by colonialism, the inequities and oppressions caused by that, that system, where they, where they happened, there is an increase in complex beliefs such as witchcraft. Helen and I both found that identifying the Adze as a vampiric spirit doesn't occur until the 20th century, in Matthew Bunsen's 1993 book, The Vampire Encyclopedia. So the Adze gained the vampire moniker not from the culture from which it originated, but from an attempt to contextualize the entity to a broader, largely Western audience. It's so important that we trace back to and understand the origins of this monster. Without that, the true meaning is lost and muddled. There is a resurgence of interest in mythology and folklore from the African continent, which is good, but it also carries the risk of misunderstanding and misinterpretation, especially since many of the documented sources of these mythologies and folklores that are available were done by people who are not themselves African. So it is well known that myths and folklore are not just stories, they are containers of cultural beliefs and values and practices, and, and so they are used to preserve and plumbed to expand cultural knowledge and practices. And I believe that myths and folklore offer a great opportunity to learn what we have thought about ourselves in the past and explore the possibilities of who we can be in the future. I couldn't have said it better myself. Studying monsters isn't about what you think you know because of something you've seen or read, but investigating what that creature means to the culture in which it was created. Before you go, our friends over on It's Lit are launching a podcast. Hosted by the amazing Princess Weeks, It's Lit Unabridged features all your favorite literature topics and thoughtful, funny conversations from amazing authors. It's basically like joining the best book club ever, but without having to actually read anything. Check out the It's Lit podcast in the link in the description below. I don't have iPad. You don't have iPad. Yeah. Or malevolence. Ugh, malevolent. Be a threat.